Hey, hey, hey. All right, before we start this video, check out the link below because I'm offering a free masterclass on improvisation. It's different. It's not what you think. Check it out, click the link below. But for now, let's get into this video. So many different contexts and if you know your positions you know that you can transition from this area of the fretboard to this one to this one to this one covering the whole fretboard there is another thing you can do with those positions and that's going to make you sound so much more focused and melodic grab your guitar i'm going to teach you all about it right after this My name is David Wallerman. Welcome to the Wallerman Guitar Artistry, which is all about helping guitar players around the world develop their musical personality. This is your instrument. This is your pencil. The story comes from inside. We're going to learn how to use the pencil to tell the best story possible. And just like any story, you need a train of thought. You need a thread. You can jump from here to here. Well, you can if you want, but it's going to make a story that is jumpy, right? Same thing happens musically, and that's what we're going to do today with those pentatonic scale positions. The backing track that I was using in the intro is available for free with the charts. All you need to do is check out the link below, sign up if you have not already. You just have to sign up once, and that will give you access to the assets for this lesson and all the other lessons on the channel. Just sign up once. It's free, and uh, yeah, it'll be better for you to work on those. All right, so what am I talking about? Really, I'm talking about the caged system. Now, if you don't know the caged system, it's way easier than you think. I'm gonna tell you about it a little bit <laughs> with the pentatonic scale positions. Now, we are considering minor pentatonic scales, but keep in mind that this can work with major pentatonic scales too, no problem. Okay, we'll get to this backing track after. I'm pointing at the floor because for those of you who are wondering, I use uh, a foot switch to activate my backing tracks, just press it. All right, besides the point, let's take a look at these pentatonic positions. So, close up, we're gonna work in the key of G. G minor pentatonic means that G is the root. So if I play a G on the low E string third fret, that note is going to attract all the other notes that I play. And these other notes are gonna be organized into a particular way, the pentatonic way. Penta means five, we have five notes. G, the attraction won't, is one of them. So you know that pentatonic, right? And if you don't, the charts are below. Just follow along. The first position is the basically the position that starts with the first note on the low E string, third fret, and we're going to organize that pentatonic scale in a narrow way, a narrow slice of the fretboard right here where the fingers are reachable. And that'll be position number one, and it happens on the right side of that first note from my perspective. That is position number one. Now, the important thing when you're using this is to be aware of where the one note is, the attraction, the root. And in this case, the first position. It's easy because it's the very first note that you play. Now, side note, that explains why most players just use that first position, right? Because visually, it makes sense. You start with the first note, that's the one, and that's cool. You can organize your thoughts that way, but that results in... Uh, things like that lick that has been heard over and over and over because your fingers kind of take control. And if you watched the channel before, you know that the idea should come from inside. Don't be slave to your fingers. Your, slave, your fingers should be slave to your musical thought inside. But anyways, that's for the first position, okay? So that first position right here. The important thing to remember is that the root, the attraction note, is on the low E string third fret in this case. All right, let's move to position number two. Position number two has the same exact notes, the one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, but we're gonna take the next slice of the fretboard. If we're in G, it's right here. And that next slice doesn't start with a one because we wanna keep things narrow. 
In the next area of the fretboard, that slice of the fretboard will start with a second note. Now, does that mean that we're no longer in G? I'm starting to play that position on this note, which is a B flat. I'm still in G, yes. Because even though we don't start with the one, we are imagining that that one is attracting everything we play. So we are imagining a backing track, which acts as the attraction. The backing track starts with a G, so G is the root. Because okay, so that's, that's the second slice of the fretboard. Now, what you need to do, if you know your positions already, is to be aware of where the one is within that slice of the fretboard. In this case, the one happens to be on the fourth string, fifth fret, right here. It's in that position. Fourth string, fifth fret, that's the one, okay? And it happens on the right side. That's, why the, that's what the cage system is. This is not a lesson on the cage system, but that's basically what the cage is. It's organizing um, each position, each slice of the fretboard, in a way so that you can uh, be aware of where the one, the attraction note is. I promise I have a point, so let's continue here. Position number three. Oops, sorry. The attraction note now, the G is on the fifth string, 10th fret, and the position that I was playing happens on the left side of that root. That's for position number three. Position number five. Here's my G. It's on the fifth string, happens on the right side from my perspective. Okay? And finally, position number um, five. Here's my root, it's on the low E string, 15th fret this time, and it happens on the left side. Okay, I went a little fast, but all you need to remember is that within these five slices of the fretboard, you will have a root, and that root is going to be on a string, and the position, the scale shape, is gonna happen either on the left side or the right side of that root. Okay, why is that important? And what does that have to do with anything like the opening of the video where I told you that a story needs to be, have a, a thread. Well, let me explain to you. The thread needs to be continuous, right? You don't want to jump from one idea to the next. I don't want to tell you about my ghost story right now. It would make no sense at all. Probably want to know. That'll be for another video. But the, the idea is that you want things coherent. And how do you do that musically? Or rather, what would not be coherent musically? What would be breaking the thread? Well, something like this. <clears throat> something, <laughs> something like this. I don't know what that was. Something like this would not be coherent. Where I'm starting in this area of the fretboard. Okay. All the notes are kind of close to each other. And then suddenly... Doesn't make much sense, right? That's a jumpy thing. You want to keep things coherent. Now, let's go back to this backing track. This backing track right here is a backing track that modulates. There are two different keys. We're starting with a G. G Dorian, we'll consider that minor pentatonic. Oh, here's a B flat minor pentatonic. <clears throat> okay, so there are two keys, right? G, B flat you might be tempted to use the same exact position, the same shape. So in G, you've got that shape starting on the third string. And then B flat, oop, B flat, sixth fret. Like that, right? You might be tempted to do that, and that sounds okay, but that's kind of jumpy. And so the idea is to use the characteristic of the five slices of the fretboard it requires a little bit of prep, but it's really going to make your, your musical story more coherent and transition within the same slice of the fretboard, but, but carefully select which uh, pentatonic position you're going to use. So in this example, we started in G minor pentatonic and we decided to use this slice of the fretboard, okay? My G, my root, is on the low E string third fret. My pentatonic scale start, um, is built on the right side of that, right? Right within this area of the fret. Then we have a B flat. So the question we need to ask, do we have B flat in this area of the fretboard? 
The answer is always yes, we do. And in this case, it's on the low E string sixth fret. Okay, now in order to stay in this zone of the fretboard, I need to, to build a B flat minor pentatonic. I determined the root right here, but happening on the left side from my perspective to stay in that zone. And if you look through your five positions, well, the position that corresponds to that is the fifth one. Now we have two positions, a G minor, the first position of G minor pentatonic. And that's on the fretboard. B flat minor pentatonic, the fifth position, is in the same zone of the fretboard. Why are we doing this? We're not doing this to comp complicate things. We're doing this to be more coherent and smoother because now I could start a sentence in G and finish it in B flat very naturally instead of having that jumpy thing. Right, you hear the jump because you're using the same shape jumping somewhere else. Let me demonstrate over the backing track. Here is uh, a short improv using the same exact shape and G, and then I will transition to B flat. So I'm gonna do the jumpy thing. I'm gonna jump to right here and you'll, you'll hear. It sounds okay, but it's not super coherent. It's not as smooth as I want it to be. G, here's it. Okay, that is kind of a jumpy thing. I'm going to transition back. Okay, now I'm going to, to play those two keys in the same zone of the fretboard. Smoother. You heard that, right? And if you develop that across all the different positions, your musicality is gonna be super smooth and your story is going to be very coherent. You're not gonna have those jumps around. It's gonna be maybe um, just more melodic and less predictable, but in a good way. Now, how do you practice this if you feel overwhelmed by the, the speed of the backing track? Very easy. Play it slow with no backing track at all. And you're going to decide on two keys randomly. We're working with minor pentatonic scales. So you could later on expand to major pentatonic scales, but minor keys. Okay, so a minor chord, minor pentatonic. A minor pentatonic, C minor pentatonic. Okay, A minor pentatonic, select the position. Maybe that first one. <laughs> Just improvise a little bit over this. Don't, don't, don't stress about the modulation. And as you're doing this, try to imagine where the C is in that, in that slice of the fretboard. I have one right here on the low E string, um, eighth fret. And as I continue to develop ideas in A minor pentatonic, I'm going to try to select the position that would have the root on the low E string 8th fret and happen on the left side to stay within that zone. And just like we did earlier, it's going to be the 5th position. And once I have that solidified in my mind, when I can visualize it, I'm going to start a phrase in A minor pentatonic and finish it in C minor pentatonic. Like that. And then try other other chords and, and there always will be an option for you. Okay, if this did not make sense in the least, rewatch it. <laughs> I think it will and, and take your time. This is not the kind of video you should watch uh, on your way back from work on the bus. You need to try this. Pause it, try it, and make sure that you grab this backing track in the charts. It's going to help you. And if this was your first visit, well, I really appreciate you stopping by. I hope you like this video. If you like this, well, you should consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss anything on the channel. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, a new free video like this one comes out, helping guitar players around the world to develop their personality on the instrument. That's what it's all about. You have something beautiful to say, very unique. 
I really do believe that. Let's bring it out. Thanks for watching this. Practice well. <laughs>